Welcome back to HRNHQ, three-year-olds back in focus. Ed DeRosa with Sarah Badwe. Sarah, we are post Triple Crown focus, about to shift to the summer racing. We are in summer now, but Jim Dandy, Haskell, preps for the Travers. Before we get to those, though, the Midwestern Derbies are upon us. Ohio Derby this week, Iowa Derby coming up, Indiana Derby. West Virginia Derby, this is what I live for, is a Cleveland native. Ohio Derby first among them, and we have some Kentucky Derby alums. Absolutely, and I think that's really the main theme of this Derby that we are seeing coming up, as well as the Mother Goose that's going to be for the three-year-old fillies at Belmont Park. You have those ex-Derby, ex-Oaks contenders, and I think we're all curious to see better performances from all of them going forward into this Ohio Derby. But you and I are agreeing on our top pick. <laughs> we are, and it has been the year of key races. And I think uh, we kind of saw that maybe in the Preakness and Belmont with the Wood Memorial stepping up and producing the winners of those two classic races. And the winner of the Kentucky Derby presented by Woodford Reserve was Rich Strike, who came out of the Jeff Ruby Stakes my pick from the Kentucky for the Kentucky Derby also did did not run as well as Rich Strike, unfortunately. But we have had a couple next out winners from the Jeff Ruby Stakes, including the horse we're both picking for the Ohio Derby. That is Tawny Port. I didn't think his Kentucky Derby was that bad. Um, wasn't that good either. But when I look at what he did in the Jeff Ruby, the Lexington Stakes, I do think he is a little better than White Barrio who has that Florida Derby win and is going to take money because of that, plus Rennie's on him. We know that's going to take some money, too, as well as some smoke. But I like Tawny Port here. I do as well, as we've said. And, you know, White Barrio certainly has the Florida credentials, but he doesn't have the credentials outside of Florida just yet. And with such a poor performance in the Kentucky Derby from him, as well as Classic Causeway, who is returning in this race, I just want to see one from them. I want to see them have success outside of where they're comfortable and what their comfort zone is. And for Classic Causeway, that would be being alone on the lead to walk through soft fractions. And I just don't see that setup happening with the presence of Pineapple Man in this race. Agreed. Uh, I'm not sure I would have liked Classic. What's his name? Classic Causeway. Oh, Classic. I, him and Creative Minister. I keep <laughs> wanting to call something else. Classic Causeway, even if he were alone on the lead, I'd salivate with the chance to play against him just because the speed numbers aren't there for me. But as you said, now the pace dynamics working against him as well. I did want to bring up, because at Thistledown, not only the Ohio Derby capping at almost all stakes pick five, but three of the five races are a mile and an eighth. And two of those races are part of the cross-country pick five as well, which we'll get to in a moment with the Mother Goose. But taking a look at the post positions, and I narrowed this down to eight to ten starters, which three of all three of the races will have that. And uh, pretty surprising, I thought, to see the outside posts do so well. Uh, normally, two turn routes definitely shade more to the inside. Post two is over. Not that I wouldn't play post two because of that, but interesting to me that it's not very evenly distributed. Definitely some love to the outside, including positive HR and impact. So it's not like those were favorites out there. So to me, that says even doesn't say to me, oh, about the outside horses, it says to me it's fair. So that gives me some hope uh, that, you know, we're going to get a good running of the nine furlong Ohio Derby, the Lady Jacqueline preceding it, also part of the pick five. And I wanted to also bring up my fair odds line, Sarah, because I do see this as a two-horse race. I have White Abario and Tawny Port is by far the likely winners of the Ohio Derby. I agree completely. And not that this is a new opinion for me, but I think that we're both taking a stand against Ethereal Road in here, who I think is a horse that is likely to take some money. Sure. Also being one that came out of that Derby eligible crowd. Even right. He didn't actually compete, allowing Rich Strike one next in. out. One next out. A track that was not playing kindly to horses coming from off the pace or having to go wide at Pimlico. And he bucked both of those track trends that we were seeing on that day with, even though I hate to admit it, a very impressive performance in that start. But can he do it again? He has no early speed to speak of. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm against him. And this race is interesting to me because looking at the morning line, the two horses I think are very likely are less than that. So, you know, are they going to be over bet? 
if it ends up where White Barrio is four to one and Tawny Port's nine to five, not saying that's going to happen, but if it did, I would be prepared to switch. I would think White Barrio is the better bet in that sense. But from a wagering standpoint, I see a lot of horses who are going to go off a lot less than the chance I give them of winning. I'm willing to lean. I call it the Heinz because it's 57. I just think it's one of those two. Ohio Derby purposes, I'd be looking to make a bigger bet on Tawny Port on his own. I think he's more likely than White Barrio. But as I work my way through the cross-country pick five, if there's a price I like elsewhere, I wouldn't be afraid to use both the chalks here. I like how you're thinking. And is there a price that you're interested in in the Mother Goose? Or no. I was going to say, are you sticking with those ex-Kentucky Oaks or ex-Kentucky Oak Day horses? Day, for sure. And there was a spirited discussion uh, on Twitter Thursday regarding watching replays and the importance or lack thereof, depending on your handicapping style. I am not a replay watcher. I am not against those who use that tool. I think it absolutely has its place. And for those that watch replays especially, I think you can get a lot more out of it than someone like me that's not my bag. All that said, I remember watching live Juju's Map, and I thought, wow, this is a racehorse. Like, to me, that was a superlative performance. And I have found when I have those reactions on the extreme that they're often more right. I don't know if that's the right meaningful. answer. but Meaningful. Thank you. Impactful going sure. forward. And for her, that check that box. I'm a little concerned numbers wise. She's just right there with the rest. And at that even money morning line, I'm basically taking a very short price that she does have to improve. But off of that, coming to the mother goose, I think she will. And if I didn't use her, I feel like I'd have to use a bunch in a short field. I'm willing to plant my flag with her. And she certainly makes the most sense. And to even think and reminisce about the heated replay discussion <laughs> that occurred after everything that occurred today on Twitter, it's like a memory that's long gone. Yeah. But Juju's map clearly coming into this with some serious talent. And Shahama, the other one that's going to take money in this short field, I'm kind of against, I'm not mm. against Juju's map though, uh, but I'm against Shahama just because she totally lacks with early speed and I want to see her bring that overseas form to the U.S. before I play her at 9 to 5 or sure. a price that's whatever even shorter, is, yeah. whatever it might be. I'll give my girl Venti Valentine one more shot at a track that she has shown to be capable. Yeah, I thought you were going to wear the hat. Oh, that's tomorrow. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not race day yet. Got it. Um, but I, I am a huge fan of hers, and I think that maybe she could rebound in this spot after kind of a lackluster performance in the Oaks, as we have seen many in the Oaks and Derby show nothing and come back and show something. Absolutely. No, and I would say at the prices, I would per, I would play her underneath before Shama just because those are going to be the short two. And unlike the Ohio Derby, I think a case can be made beyond the top two. For me, there's just really one case. It's Juju's map. She will be a single in my cross country pick five. I do want to find a price elsewhere though, because I'm, I'm, I'm talking the Ohio Derby. And if I don't, then there'll be another plan in place. But uh, yeah, Juju's map for me thought her Oaks Day run was spectacular. And for you as well on top. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Venti Valentin, we, we pretty much agree, I think, on both races, it sounds like. Shocking. We did not mention Breeze, who was in the Wood Memorial. Maybe. As much as I like Skippy, who is third behind others, he seems like maybe he was even too far out of it. And certainly Morello didn't do much in his return. Well, and also with that horse, he should have come back and done a little bit better than third against that group going into tougher companies such as White Abario, Tawny Port, and right. even Ethereal Road for me to want to take him. Uh, I agree. So it's the top two for us, Tawny Port on top, Juju's Map on top. In the Mother Goose, and I think next week's the Stephen Foster at Churchill. Mandaloon. Mandaloon, Olympiad, others, maybe <laughs> Turf. Others? Turf, perhaps, <laughs> hopefully. That'd be fun. All right, well, she's Sarah Ahmed. We're at HRN. Good luck.